What has happened to HVAC prices since 2020? Pandemic, regulations by the EPA, introduction of PE firms. It's been like the perfect storm for prices just to be absolutely nuts. It's impacting our customers. It's impacting contractors like us. So let's dive in. Questions we get asked pretty often. Why are HVAC systems so expensive? Since 2020, prices have been kind of crazy. In 2020, obviously COVID, pandemic, all, all that stuff. What happened was a logistics problem. Our supply chains got disrupted because of, because of the pandemic. Uh, and so a lot of manufacturers were having to retool and, and figure out, you know, where were they getting the specialized parts for that equipment? So that way we can do installations here in our backyard, which is Oklahoma City metro area, and then all across the nation. So getting specific components into the US, it became a logistics problem. So we had some some pretty substantial price increases. Uh, anecdotally, we had some pricing structures uh, that we had with some of the supply chains in Oklahoma City, where those supply chains had a pandemic clause. And so our specific price structure that we had with them that was uh, in contract in 2019 was now null and void because of uh, a pandemic situation. So they and we experienced price increases for that particular piece of equipment. And so a lot of contractors throughout the US experienced a very similar thing where manufacturers were having to compensate for poor logistics within price price increases across the nation. So we had a logistics problem in 2020. So that resulted in some price increases. And then other items that happened, so 2020, 20, up to 2023, HVAC manufacturers were also having to retool for the changes that were happening within that the EPA was rolling out. So for example, your HVAC system is uh, this, the efficiency is governed uh, uh, by the EPA. The EPA establishes, hey, this is the minimum requirement that these systems are supposed to get. And so they introduced a change in the SEER rating. So if you're familiar with the term SEER rating, it stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating. They made some changes which basically said, hey, how we were measuring the efficiency of a system is not accurate and it's not accurate to real home use. And so these SEER ratings that we've promised, these the equipment's not getting. Uh, and so we need to uh, tighten our uh, measurements so that they're more accurate whenever they're actually installed into your house. And so they came out with SEER 2. So they just renamed it, called it SEER 2. And so the efficiency rating of SEER 2 equipment was gonna be more accurate uh, than the SEER 1 systems. And so uh, so the, the EPA rolled out their regulations. Manufacturers, again, had to retool and manufacture equipment that met that minimum standard of what of, of SEER 2. And it changes region to region on, on AC systems and what that min minimum efficiency requirement was. So manufacturers, again, having to retool became another exist logistics problem where they're having to manufacture uh, brand new equipment, uh, get new SKUs for, for different model numbers and all sorts of stuff to meet those minimum efficiency requirements. So that resulted in some, some price changes, so some price increases. And then rolling into 2025, we have the new refrigerant. So EPA rolled out some more uh, guidelines as well. So they had to change the type of refrigerant that was being used. So you've probably heard the term R22 or Fortin A. So R22 was phased out, Fortin A was phased out in 2025. And so they're, they're stepping down on their global warming potential uh, refrigerants. And so Fortin A has a higher global, global warming potential. And so they came out with R454B and then R32 has been around for a while. And so they came out with these, these refrigerants have to meet the, uh, the minimum global warming potential rating. And what that resulted in is manufacturers, again, having to retool their existing systems so they can utilize the new refrigerants that's now mandated by the EPA. And so that has been the result of a lot of our, our price increases uh, up until 2025. Um, and so that is one of the reasons why prices for HVAC systems have been have been super crazy. So like uh, lo the logistics problems, the EPA changes, uh, it's been uh, kind of one thing after the other uh, that is putting a strain on our manufacturers to one, meet the requirements that the EPA uh, dictates, as well as uh, getting, being able to produce enough systems to be able to meet the demand that the U.S. has for needing new HVAC system replacements. And obviously you have the, the, the old term, you know, supply and demand. So they have to create so much of that equipment, provide that 
be available and then they can they can then plan for uh, how many system replacements are, are we gonna do within a year. And whenever you have those quick change, the, those quick turnarounds, it's hard to track. It's hard to it's hard to keep up with, and so that's one of the reasons why price increases have pri prices for HVAC installations have gone so high. Hey guys, since we have recorded this video, we have some big news. Uh, we have been working on a brand new pricing tool for our website. So if you go to yarbronsons.com and click on the instant estimate button, it will give you an instant estimate in 45 seconds or less if you speed run it. Uh, that's how long it took me. Uh, but again, I just click through it really fast. But you can get an instant estimate on what it would cost to replace your home's HVAC system or water heaters in less than 45 seconds. Upfront pricing gives you a great range of ideas as far as what to expect when it comes to replacing your home's two most expensive appliances, your HVAC and your water heater. So if you're in our service area, go check it out. All you gotta do, name, phone number, zip code, verify that you are indeed human. Link will be down in the doobly-doo. Uh, another thing to consider as well, uh, so in 2020, private equity uh, investment firms uh, discovered that, well, uh, even in a pandemic, these trade businesses are considered essential by the government. So they can't shut these essential trade services down due to a pandemic, or at least that's what happened in 2020 was we were, we were deemed essential. And so we had to continue operating, make sure people had air conditioning and, and whatnot. And so those private equity firms that basically said, hey, this is a pretty good business to, that we may consider getting into. And so private equity rolled in and they started buying up a lot of HVAC companies within large cities. And so you also have the introduction of a lot of companies getting rolled up into uh, into a private equity firm. Uh, and sometimes you may experience a, a, a brand name change or a name change within that company, but those companies are now owned by and they are now responsible to their shareholders. And so they have to drive profit margin, they have to drive efficiency. And so those companies are now beholden to uh, following more of a more of metrics um, that one puts money back into the investor's pocket for uh, providing the, uh, um, the capital. And so that has also resulted in price increases. The light at the end of the tunnel is that the EPA regulations, they're all good things. Higher efficiency, better saving on utility bills. You get what is promised. Uh, and so those regulations were necessary for us to do. Reducing the global warming uh, potential of, of refrigerants was, was a good thing for us to do. And so all those things were necessary, and it's kind of like ripping a Band-Aid off. Hurts at first, but over time, it will result in better healing. And so I believe that the price, the price increases, the, the light at the end tunnel uh, for homeowners is that whenever system replacement makes the most sense to you as a homeowner, um, doing it, doing it now is always going to be uh, more cost effective than doing it later. And then, whenever you do an installation, practices it's it's become a very competitive market within the HVAC space to be as good as possible. And there's so much out there. Like in order to be competitive, you can't just be competitive on price. You have to be competitive on. Uh, how the installation is done. Are you taking care of the homeowner you know, after you do the install, if anything ever goes wrong? And so making sure that you have a 100% satisfaction guaranteed with, with system replacements and making sure that you are getting what you are promised. Because with the with internet, there's, there's so much out there, we are accountable to our homeowners. We're accountable to, uh, to people so that whenever we, whenever we uh, do an install, we want to make sure that we do a great job because we want that five-star review because that's that's a great referral for our business. And so in 2025, it's very competitive within the HVAC market space because of PE, because of all the regulations that have been introduced. Uh, we have to be very good at our jobs to make sure that one, we're installing the new equipment uh, to the manufacturer specifications. And so for homeowners, the, the benefit is, is you have access to a lot of really, really good HVAC companies and you are able to search online and find uh, find the best company that, that fits that fits your needs and, and gets you what you want. And with the price increases in 2025 going forward, there are not any major changes uh, rolling out in 2026. Uh, and so we should see a stabilized market. Uh, and so replacing your system now is always gonna be cheaper than doing it later. Uh, but you now have a lot of tools in your belt that you didn't have five, 10 years ago. So that makes me excited uh, for homeowners is that they're able to vet the people that are coming out to their house. Um, they're able to vet and find a company that works works best with what they're looking for. That's that's what I'm excited about. That concludes what price of your HVAC systems have, have uh, 
have continued to go up. Uh, however, if you are in the Oklahoma City metro area um, and you're looking for that five-star service, we'd love to be your company. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Yarbrough.